All right, we've been talking about love, marriage, relationship, amen. And amazingly, I, I heard that we had a great time on Sunday. All right, all right, all right, amen. Praise God. Because we went live on Sunday, we, we had feedbacks from the United States, at least three people from the United States, are giving feedback on the message of Tuesday, I mean of Sunday. We had feedbacks from different places that uh, they were really blessed. This afternoon, I got a call from Spain. I got a call from Spain of somebody who watched the service online and said he was so blessed by the second service sermon on marriage and is shaping things up. Amen. All the way from Spain. Amen. I think we should appreciate what God is doing in our midst. Amen. Amen. And the person said to me, please, can you be with us in Spain next month? I said, no, 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 no. no. Next month, no, no, no. I said, if, if you want me to come, we plan it very well. I'm, I'm, I'm a very busy pastor. <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. I'm a very busy pastor. I said, next month is scheduled for Dubai, not Spain. So if you want me in Spain, we can do June or July. Next month is scheduled for Dubai. May, June is scheduled for United States, Canada, and UK. So July, we are available. Amen. Praise God. All right. So last week, I began to talk about the five foundational laws of marriage, all right? And then I introduced us to two. I'm going to just do a recap, a synopsis of that particular message, and then we will go a little further, not so deep. Hallelujah. I said that people have become so fearful about marriage, especially with the stuffs we hear around us and uh, the things we see. It's even more terrible when <clears throat> a pastor had to divorce twice. So you are afraid. If pastors can't get it right, then who is ever going to get it right? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. But God's um, foundation uh, standard very sure. The rate of divorce is high. The stuff we hear on social media can make us very, very, very fearful. Amen. But what you gaze your eyes on is what you become. So you've got to fix your eyes on the positive side and people who are getting it right. Amen? And that should encourage you that marriage is a big possibility. I am encouraged by my parents. I'm encouraged by my parents. We've been married for anytime soon. We'll do 50 years wedding anniversary. Yeah, so that's a proof that it can work. That's a proof. Amen. That's a proof. Hallelujah. And then we have seen 60th wedding anniversary. Reverend Yomulu Fiadi's father was um, 90 or so some weeks ago. And prior to that time, I think he celebrated 65th wedding anniversary. And they are still together. So those are encouragement to us. Amen. So we don't get our confidence from those who got it wrong. Amen. This thing can be very funny. That's why we told you that if you're going to get married, and I don't know why, I've said that to a lot of people today. I've counseled people today, and the same thing kept repeating itself. Amen. You can't trust your feelings. That's one of the most trusted parts of your being. You can't trust your feelings. You can love for one month. You can feel, you feel emotionally. And after one month, it disappears like it never crossed your mind. You can't trust your feeling. So that's why feeling must never lead you to marriage. Okay? When the Bible says next week on Sunday, on Sunday when we begin to demystify the word love, you will understand that. Amen? And I told you there are basically, I think, four types of love, basically. There are some jealousies, but there are, there, 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 are, there are basically four types of love. Uh, you have filial, uh, which is the 
friendship kind of love. You have eros, which is the sexual kind of love. You have terigo, which is um, more like the brotherly. No, philo is the brotherly love. Terigo is the friendship kind of love. Eros, sexual kind of love. And then you have agape, which is the very love of God. All right? And the truth of matter is that you can't marry somebody based on philo. Some got into marriage based on philo that he felt for the person, and then it collapsed. You can't marry somebody based on eros. Some have gotten into marriage based on eros. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wow. When I see the figure, I, it just throws me off balance. Amen? Listen to me. You want, if you marry figure, you're in trouble. <laughs> because, half, because figure is designed by a feeling. And then once feelings disappear, you can't see figure again. <laughs> are, you, are you with me tonight? Yeah, we come into the big. Let's talk to the young ones. Then we move over to our moms and dad. Once, once, once feeling disappear, you can't see figure again. That's why they say beauty is in the eyes of the beholder. <laughs> Are you with me? Once you can't see feelings, so you can't trust your feeling. Not just for love, you can't trust your feeling. Something happens, you are hungry. That's a feeling. Okay. You have the feeling of anger. No, you can't trust your feelings. So that's why when you are angry, you've got to live intentionally. Such that you are not ruled by how you feel. When you feel, please let that settle in your brain. Tell yourself, I can't trust my feeling. So when you feel angry, so you've got to learn to live intentionally. You tell yourself, you know I've told you before, you can't trust your feelings. So what do you do? Calm down. Because anything you do and you follow that feeling of anger, that feeling is not sustainable. How many people have done some things and by afternoon they are regretting, why did I do this thing? Oh, I was just angry. That anybody understand what I'm saying? So you can't trust your feeling. So you feel angry, tell the feeling, I can't trust you. Keep calm. Don't talk. Don't act. Until when the feeling sees that you are not giving eat attention. It will disappear. Then you now get yourself back. They will be thanking God that you didn't act under the impulse of that feeling. Many marriages have been destroyed because husband acted followed the feeling. Wife followed the feeling. And it's like that. I told you one time when somebody went to Jew and said, my, my husband is always beating me. If I, he has told me to a punching bag. And when he was talking, when he was talking, the wisdom of the elders, the man was looking at him. Okay. He said, this is what you do. I'll do, I'll, do, I'll do a prayer for you. So he brought one bottle of water from his refrigerator. Not only water, not water they prayed for, not anything. He said, this is what you are going to do. Once your husband gets angry, start, quickly rush. Drink this water. No drop must come out of your mouth. You will see that the water will control him. Hey? Thank you, man of God. So the next time the husband got angry, quickly obey. One drop must not fall. As much as she was boiling, I wanted to. <laughs> After the husband boiled for like five minutes, the guy calmed down. The guy left, came back, and said, Honey, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, it's not my fault. And he was wondering, I'm sorry. It didn't happen like two times. Then he ran to the man of God. Sir, ah, that water is powerful. Say powerful water. The water work. And then the man said, you know what? There's nothing about the water. It's ordinary water. But while you were talking, I discovered why your husband has turned you to a punching bag. This is your mouth. <laughs> so, so when the water was in your mouth, when it was boiling, did you talk? Say, I couldn't talk, sir. That's why he left, calmed down, came back to beg you. So the reason you've been turned to a punching bag is because you're always following your feelings. And there are too many people who do that, even in church. Even though the work of the Holy Spirit, when we got born again, you know, we, we have the gift of the Holy Spirit. One of the main essence of the gift is to regulate our emotions. Okay? You have love, you have peace, you have joy. You have meekness, you have gentleness, you have faith, so that it regulates control. So you don't say you're the department, you're your HOD talk, and you just play up. Ah, me, I can't take that oh, because somebody is HOD. If not for HOD, in the real sense, are we mates? That's it, following your, your feelings. 
You may feel bad, but never follow your feelings. All right? So, we talked about, number one, the law of the lead. Genesis 2, 24 to 25, and Matthew chapter 8, 19. We talked about that, 3 to 6, and Ephesians 5, 31 to 32. Talk about the law of the lead, which means that no relationship should supersede relationship between you and um, your, your spouse. And I told you that the man, so shall the man live is what is. Talk to me. The man will do what? And, oh, talk to me. He will do what? He will do what? Live who? Live who? Say loud and clear. He will live what? So mother and father, leave them alone. They have to leave you. Amen? Do you know how much, how much I suffer for my son? One woman will not enter his house and be enjoying. Thank you for your suffering. May God reward your suffering. In Jesus' name. He said, eh, Naim, eh, Naim, Mama, eh, you leave them. Because let me say this to you. You know, in Africa, one of the things that have, that have destroyed marriages is that we think marriage is a continuation of the existing family. No, sir. It's not. It's not. Every marriage is the creation of a different new family. It's never an extension. It's not a continuation. It's something new that never existed before. So, if anything from the old will find access into the new, they must ask for permission. They must ask for permission. Amen? They must. So, and the word leave, I told you, is a Greek word, dabak. D-A-B-Q. And that word means to pursue with energy. Cleave the back to pursue with energy. He will leave what his father and mother and do what? And pursue his wife with what? Energy. You're going to put all of your effort, all of your energy in pursuing that. So, if you can't leave your father or your mother, you are not qualified for marriage. So, marriage is not for boys. Only boys don't leave their father and mother. Mommy, I want to rent house. Come and look at it. Amen. Just carry your bag and leave quick, quick. That's a boy in man's clothing. Amen. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. He's a boy. Amen. And mommy, mommy, how much do you think I should be giving her for soup money if I marry her? That's a boy. That's a boy. That's a boy. Run away. Marriage is for men, not for boys. He can't, Indomie boy, thank you. He can't leave. Because one day, He's going to ask mommy, mommy, how many times should I sleep with I a week? <laughs> Bobo, thank you. That's a Bobo boy. The new man's skin. All right? I'm telling you. So, marriage is for men, it's not for boys. If you are still demonstrating the attitude, and there are many boys who are married, that's the problem. That's why we're having a problem. Too many boys are married. Boys, just in marriage. Why? Because they think what it, what it requires to marry is just to be able to impregnate a girl. <laughs> eh? That you can impregnate a girl doesn't make you a man. No, no, no. It doesn't make you a man. If you see the restaurants I've gotten online today, thank you. Tell them. Make money. Use your faith to get a job. Don't use it to look for a wife. Amen. Use your, thank you. Man of God. Preach it. Talk it. I say, yes. Use your faith to do that. So, marriage is for men. You pursue, and then we talk about the law of pruning, which means cutting away dead or overgrown branches or stems, especially to encourage growth. You must cut off whatever, whatever, in that marriage around your wife. Are you getting me? You know, I, I told you this story before, that you know, somebody, somebody's um, uh, sister-in-law beat up the wife. Sister-in-law. And then when, when he came back from the office, the wife was crying and told him, see what your sister did to me. Because blah, blah, blah. the sister was living with them and beat up her brother's wife. Anyway, I know that cannot happen in my own family. Man, no sister. Eh? No. No. I'm, I'm serious. Too. I'm serious. Too. The, no, the beating of, of eternity. You just be close to somebody visiting their fire. <laughs> 
He said, he said, he said, your sister, look at what happened between us. The next thing he slapped me. I never know it. And the guy looked, left, and I said, she said, mama did not come. He said, he said, thank God mama did not come. It could have been worse. So. Real life, I'm not joking. That's how boys talk. Because the job of a man will also be to protect the woman, protect the wife, protect him from in-laws. If you are not careful, in-laws are very dangerous people. As you are saying, yes, you too, you are in-law to somebody. You are one of the dangerous people. <laughs> Amen? I'm telling you, so you must have the skill to manage in-laws. In-laws are very dangerous, but you must also understand, when you get married, you don't marry a man, you marry a family. So young girls must also have that skill. You are marrying a family. So don't treat them as if they are trash, they are nothing, they are whatever. Now me and my husband. Don't do Nami and my husband though. So you must have the skill to have you, your husband, and have the skill to manage them. Put them in there. It's management too. <laughs> I told you one day, mama. <laughs> my, my, my mom lived with us for three years cumulatively, right? I guess. So but I was wondering, because every film I watch, when mother-in-law comes to stay, they start fighting with the daughter-in-law. So I was wondering how she was coping with my wife that they are not fighting. Remember, honey? So one day I had to ask my wife, you work in Jani? You know they fight? Ah? Uh -uh. Yes. You are <laughs> because I'm even afraid of the two of you now because <laughs> when two men are now playing, are you getting me? Is that fighting that because you know their head, there's no, no, that cooperation will make you fear. Yeah. Well, you don't have anywhere to run to. <laughs> so I asked my wife that. He said, like, you don't fight my mom. No quarrel. She looked at me and said, <laughs> See, he said, how many quarrel can I count? But before you come, I settle everything. I make sure I reconcile back with mama and beg and we are okay. So that's why you have never had those quarrel. Three years. I didn't settle one quarrel. Three years. Not once. I didn't see argument once in three years. I said, but well, we did, but my mother-in-law is my mother-in-law. I said, wow, that's fantastic. So one day I was talking to him and I said, my wife is the most important person in my life. Then my mom heard and she came out. Hey, come. <laughs> I'm telling you. I'm telling you. She can say, hey, come. Well, I, I want you. Is this real or you are joking? And I was wondering, what's wrong with this woman? Is that serious? I said, mommy is real now. He said, the most important person in my life is my wife. I said, after my wife, maybe you, just to make her happy. I said, maybe you. I said, you know what? You can't compare the love I have for my wife to the love I have towards you. I love you. It's a different kind of love. I love my wife. It's a different kind of love. So I love the both of you. But if you really want me to tell you the truth, it's my wife before you. So, okay, oh, love, oh, love. Oh, mm. <laughs> but you know what? That day, something was settled. And it was once and for all. Boys don't have the courage to tell that to their mom. Only men. I'm telling you. Boys don't have that courage. Yo. You say, no, mommy is you. I'm just joking. You do like this to the wife. Mommy is you, is you, are, you, are, you are. <laughs> Mommy, you are number one. How can I see? I'm just joking with her. Like, like no, no, it's number one. No. You come out and say, okay, oh, love, oh, love. Oh. You know, we, ju we just settled that once and for all, finally. So that you don't even think about it. Don't even think of any rivalry. Forget it. You know you, you know you lost me, so don't even bother. Just cooperate with us. Do you get it? Just cooperate with us. And that ends the story. So you got to prune your wife. You got to make sure that um, you protect her and that you nurture her. Praise the name of the Lord. The third law is the law of possession. The law of possession. The law of possession. And I'm going to stop on that. You know, I didn't want to teach tonight because I felt you are prayed for us. What, what you said you want. So I'll give you the law of possession. Let me say this again. Let me go back to the law of pruning. You know, marriage requires a lot of work. It requires a lot of energy. Mm. It requires a lot of work. Both of you must keep working on the marriage, servicing it for it to be at 
you know, optimal performance. You must work at it. You can't give up on your marriage very soon, too soon, because they are, no, no, you must keep working on it. Don't forget Gamil, gem, something precious, but it comes out of intense pressure and it. So you can't. A marriage means a lot to God. Can I pray for you that you will enjoy your marriages? I say you will enjoy it. You will not endure it. You will enjoy it. In the name of Jesus Christ. So the law of possession. Marriage is about sharing everything. Now this law also distinguishes between men and boys. I said in one of my quotes last week, if you are not willing to share your life, your energy, your time, your money, your dreams, your visions, your values, everything with a woman, then you are not ready for marriage until you are ready to share all of those stuff. That's when you're ready for marriage. Because the Bible said the two of them were naked. They were not ashamed. He said the two shall become what? One. In other words, it's only in marriage that one plus one is one. In mathematics, one plus one is, in marriage, one plus one is, is one. Yeah, is one. The Bible says one will chase a thousand. In mathematics, two will chase two thousand. In marriage, two will chase ten thousand. That's why the, the Bible didn't say three. Two will chase ten thousand. So there is, there is a geometric flow of energy. There's a geometric flow of power that comes into a family when things are done according to God's prescription. So the law of possession, marriage is about everything as revealed in the two shall become one flesh. In other words, when you get married, you share everything with your spouse. Somebody say everything. You say everything. Yes. Now, we have had people say this before, that man of God... <laughs> This one is very tough. As when we begin to talk about joint account, financial transparency, some men will just shake their head. <laughs> I've, seen people, I've counseled somebody about that before. They said, hmm, just thank God for your wife. <laughs> just thank God you didn't marry my wife. <laughs> so all this one you are saying. <laughs> I'm going to that kind of response. I mean, you get what I'm saying? You have shared with some lady who say, hey, my husband, hey, pastor, you don't know anything. Hey, if you know this man, if I be your sister, you won't, you won't cancel me that way. Ah, pastor, you don't know my husband. I understand that happens because when, once a man starts becoming irresponsible, frivolous in his thinking and his spending and everything, then it's difficult to actually trust. So, because marriage is all about trust. And trust is not always about financial, I mean, uh, uh, sexual I mean, infidelity or whatever. Even financially, we have to be able to trust one another. One another. Is that all right? And in every other thing. So are you willing to share everything with your spouse? The law of possession says it's no longer us. It becomes we. You share everything with your spouse from your bank account to everything as low eye as decision making. You share everything together. A dominant marriage in which one spouse makes all the decisions and controls everything will always bring trouble. Will always bring trouble. Because in marriage, it's not about my interest. Our, our interest is always about what? Our collective interest. And then when one interest has to succumb to the other, I think the husband will always remember, I am supposed to love my wife as Christ loved the church. And when the interest of Christ and the interest of the church class, you know what he did? He said, the flesh, the spirit is willing the flesh is weak. My will is, he said, but nevertheless, let your will be done. Nevertheless, let the church, let them have their will. Let them be washed with my blood. Let down his life. 
You must love your wife that you are willing to lay down your life for her. Amen? Not that two people were in church. They just threw anger. Papa left mama. <laughs> Before they say Jack Robinson, Papa don't reach outside. <laughs> Papa say, eh, and only you delay <laughs> Amen? You must be willing to lay down your life for your wife. You share everything together. Why are you laughing? You don't want to share everything, including, if possible, joint accounts. Because in marriage, it's not about our money. It's not about my money. It becomes what? Honestly. Listen to me. When you have... I know this is a problem. I think I'm going to take one or two questions before we close. People are, people are like, hmm, Pastor, you don't understand. Hey, man. Of course, we are talking to Christians. If you marry an unbeliever, that's why I was telling you one of the ways to find life. You have to look, does this person have a space in my future plans? Is this somebody we can plan to work together? Listen, women. Nobody chooses for you. You choose for yourself. Why are you doing as if they impose the man on you? Amen? You married a drunkard, you are blaming the pastor. You chose him. He didn't force himself on you. You know, the man you marry, you must be able to submit to the man. And you are the one that will choose who you will submit to. So if you choose the wrong person, well, I can't submit to that kind of a man. Did they choose him for you? You chose him. It's not by force, it's by choice. You see, listen, listen, listen. Ma proposal is usually offer and acceptance. If he brings his offer, decline it. If you accept it, you are saying, by force, I will submit to you. It happens with men too. Say, just keep going in the front. Just keep going in the front. Say, you are supposed to go with your wife. That's where you told me. There's a, say, something's wrong with you. Did they, Abby, did they choose her for you? Who chose her? You did. So, you must be very comfortable with your choice. You must be proud of your choice. Amen. She, she, listen, listen. That's why I said, that, that, that was why I said, listen to me. I'm proud of mama. Yeah, she wasn't this far, but I'm proud of her. Hallelujah. She's the most beautiful woman I've ever met. And can I shock you? Can I tell you the truth? Can I tell you the truth? This is a problem. Because there are people here, there are people here, let me explain to you. There are people here who will never agree with such a statement. Because you are going to tell yourself, I know mama, I know how she looks. How could she be the most beautiful woman? Listen to me. Because love is a commitment. It's a decision. What I'm saying is that my own decision as a person, this is the most beautiful woman. I don't care. Oh. It's not about face. It's not about skin color. My decision, my commitment, that is it. End of discussion. When you think in terms of feeling, then you are going to be thinking, ah, can she be with Agbani Darego? Now you are thinking feeling. You are, you are looking at look. But beauty is in the hair of the beholder. It's a decision. It's a commitment. Ah. So, if, if I have made that commitment, if she grows twice fat, I don't have a choice. I stick, I stick by my commitment. I, I chose it, man. I got to stay by it, man. That's it. It is what it is. It is what it is. But while she was growing that fat, you could help her. Send her to the gym because you know what you want. You know, you, it's, it's your duty to prune, to help her. Send her to the gym. Pay, it, pay for her if she doesn't want to pay. If she's, if she's doing Ijebu, pay for her. Take her there. Help her. You get what I'm saying? If you know, if you know that she, she doesn't have the courage or, or, or the stamina, join her. Say, because of her, you, too, you have to, be, not because of you, because of her. Be the encouragement. Because at the end of the day, listen, what you make out of her is what you will present to yourself. For Jesus kept washing the church with water so that he might present to himself a church without spot, wrinkle, and blemish. So that's why he keeps washing because he knows if I don't wash it clean, 
if I mess it up, I will present to myself a messed up church. So, and our job as husbands is to keep working on them because if you abandon them, that is what you will present to yourself. Abandoned beauty that you'll never be proud of. If you want to clap, come on, clap. If you want to clap. And because I don't want an abandoned building, I want a finished product that I can be proud of, that people can be proud of. Are you getting me? And then let me also tell you one thing about beauty that you should understand. Beauty is not about look. There are several characteristics of beauty. To another person, an expensive wig, an empty brain is a very ugly human being. Hmm? So some people, beauty begins from the point of intelligence. It's not in the face. It's inside, oh God. Beauty is inside the brain. Amen? Because of what use is a beautiful face. Who cannot engage me at my intellectual level? We can't plan together. We can't envision together. Amen? We can't strategize together. Amen? Ah, beautiful face is not passport to the kingdom of God. It's not passport to prosperity. I either go for an ugly who has something upstairs to give me. What you call ugly? Amen. It depends. It depends. Amen. So what am I saying, ladies and gentlemen? You are supposed to share everything together. Everything together. Money, dreams, visions. That's why I say to you that when you are dating somebody outside, Watch those who have side cheeks. When they sit with their side cheeks, what do you think forms 80% of their conversation? Can anybody tell me? It's just romantic talks. That's all. Are, are you getting me? Does anybody, anybody, does anybody understand what I'm talking about? <laughs> bros, wait till they talk. Bros, bros. Bros, wait till they talk. <laughs> wait till they talk. I see. I'm saying the right thing. You know it. You know it. Everybody say I know it, Joe. Amen. Because listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. You see, when, when, when I sit with my wife at home or we're talking, honey, I love you. You are the sugar in my tea. That one doesn't even take 10% of our time of talking. Are you getting what I'm saying? We have the future to plan. We have projects we want to do together. We have children we must plan for. Are you getting me? We are parents. We must accommodate in our plans. We have a church. We are, we, are, we are planning for. There are things to do. Sometimes when we sit down at home, three hours, we are just talking church, strategizing. How do we get this done? How do we get that done? How do we get... So he, he, just imagine somebody has a site. You can't be discussing all that now. You, every time you sit down, you say, that, oh, you are so beautiful. You know, when I just look at you, my head will just be turning. And, and the idiot thinks... That's all it is to discussion. And then she, she, she eventually comes in, forces her way in. As well that there are other things that comes in that is not even then there's problem. Problem starts. So if you are, if you are dating somebody and you are all the, blah, 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 listen, when you get married, you can't sit down with your wife and be talking all day, oh, you are the best thing that happened to me, that is you get married. Blah, 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 blah. Then, vision, dreams, purposes, all that comes alive, and you just discover that somebody is not in need. There's, he has no space. He has no form of comeliness or whatever that you can desire and put him inside of that. You will get tired. In fact, love will just disappear. You will not just see the love again. And you'll be wondering, where is this love? So what is behind six is not just seven. A billion is there. Three is, is. So don't just look at seven behind six and say, no, it's no more than seven. No. Your boss will say, Oto ale yonfa. Ujo de law. So you've got to choose right. You've got to choose right. Can this, does this person has what it takes? Are you getting me? Can you see Mitchell, uh, Mitchell Obama? Obama, have you seen her give a speech? Even the husband will stand and be clapping. I'm, I'm not kidding. You see, Vika Trump was supposed to give a speech sometimes ago. She went and took Michelle's speech, and dubbed it word for word. I was, I people were just laughing. Yes, <laughs> oh no, Obama. Now, nah, wow, well, this is our new president's wife. How many of you saw that clip? She, I mean, you cut dust and be speaking. 
when she was giving it, what she was even giving off and without reading paper, you went to write and you're like, so do you know in Obama's popular, Obama's reign, Mitchell was so popular. There were places Mitchell was representing Obama. See Trump's wife. I mean, you can't even see her in public, whatever. You where really you go see her. You can. Do you know, do you think it's the man's will to live her that way? It's because, I'm telling you. You think it's his will to leave him? But, but, but he has thought about it. Capacity is not really... So let's just do the flashy of first lady and let's, let's not get her into trouble. So that you'll not be doing copy and paste all the time. And social media, just carry, so let's just leave her. So it, it's part of it. It's part of it. Amen. If I can't be somewhere, I can tell my wife to go represent me. Because I know she will deliver. Amen. The little you have seen of her in this story is just because I am too active. To sit in one place. If I'm supposed to be sitting every Sunday, I just be just say, don't worry, next year now you are going to be the pastor. I just be, <laughs> yeah. I'll be preaching around the world. That's your pastor. It's where I get, start getting used to it. Wow. <laughs> That's your pastor. <laughs> Amen. So you're going to share everything. I mean everything. God bless you. So your question, man. You wanted to ask a question. Amen. Okay, who, who wants to ask a question? Let me see. Okay, let me hear a question. Tell us the mic. So if you're not sharing money with your husband or wife, go on. Now even wives will say, eh, he can't know my salary. Uh, Pastor, I'll never allow him to know my salary. There are husbands who say, eh, she can't know my salary. Lie, lie. No, uh, Pastor, you are not doing it the God's way. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Sir, my question is, please, I want to un understand where, please, because in my own family now, okay. I have a cousin brother. Okay, sir. That he married over five years ago now. Please listen to him. Okay. So since that five years ago now, they have been having issues, even to the extent that a, a day came that the wife used more than Break, break his head. head. Yeah. The, the other time, the wife sent some his immediate younger brothers that to, are that are courtists to come and kill the husband. Uh, yeah, something like that. And besides, now where this thing is very an annoying is that both of them are believers. Both of them are believers. Okay. Now, okay. now. So the question now is, what okay, is the response? The question is that. Does it mean that sometimes God's way in marriage sometimes leaves us in trouble? No. Okay. One. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Number one, let me say this. Everybody listen to me because you all fall victim of that. Amen. <clears throat> Somebody said to me one day, after I'll be saying Christian, 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 have we not had Christian president in Nigeria? Are they better? I say we have never had one Christian president. He said, was well, Pastor John not a Christian? I said, no, not a Christian. Amen? Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, again, who is a Christian? That comes up. And I will not go into the theology, theological aspect of it today. You know, that you are in church doesn't make you a Christian. Because that you are in garage doesn't make you a car. He doesn't make you a car. Are you getting me? The challenge is anyone going to church is a, is a Christian. No, anyone going to church is a Christian. But I bet you, bro, listen to me. If they are real believers, eh, all that can happen. They, are, they, they both attend church. Just take that from me. They are not. Because if they have, they have the spirit of God, they are believers in, in spirit and in truth. No, you won't, you won't do that now. Are you getting me? No, you can't. You can't. No. Number two is that, please take note of this. Take note of this. 90% of marital crisis starts before the marriage. But people ignore it. You can. A woman who is breaking your head with mortar five years down the line, it won't just turn a mad person inside. You would have been seeing signs before now. I just heard of a lady that he said, he's so jealous of me. He beats me to when he's, and he will stay with me in the hospital to pay all the money. But I love him. I love him. 
Hey, hey, hey. You know what I'm telling myself? <laughs> so when something happens, if, if she gets married to that guy, they will say, no. You, you see, you, you would have seen the handwriting on the wall. A man that will be mad inside marriage, most of them, maybe some are able to act into it, but not all of them can get the script right. You would have seen that madness. A lady will be that mad inside marriage. You would have seen... Are you getting what I'm saying? I was counseling a lady this week, and then she told me, well, the pro I, I, I had to ask her. I said, please, can I ask you, do you have this problem before you go? He said, yes, we have the same problem even before we go married. But I thought now that we are married, it will take his eyes off that. But he keeps bringing that up now. And it's like, because of that, he lives in suspicion of every moment, everything that I do. Amen. So, that's why before you get married, please, look well before you leap. Look well. Don't just leap anyhow. But at the same time, such questions cannot be given a generic answer until you sit down with the both of them and get what is the reason behind the breaking of the bottle, behind the courtist, and so on and so forth. But really, there's one thing you can do for them. Please pray for them. Because prayer can do a lot of things. Keep praying for them. That God will touch them. The Holy Spirit will touch the heart of that woman. And then she's just going to change. Right? But I'm telling you, the handwriting would have been on the wall. Sometimes we think love will see us through. I know she's a mad girl, but I just love her. We think love. And all of a sudden, you just cry that it's like the love can't even get you through this tough man. And people have no choice than to say, let them go. Everybody who divorced with it, do you think there was not a time that they were saying, I love you? I would, if I was because I love you, that made them sign that death warrant. And I've told you, once you, once you sign up for marriage, amen, it's one channel for the rest of your life. If what they are now showing is not interesting, if you choose black and white, it's your headache. Amen? <laughs> if I have a passport in my own with varieties, don't look there. Just face your NTA, one channel. I do have a choice. Some choose NTA, analog. Amen? Black and white. Oh, too bad. Some choose CNN. They, they have varieties, you know. Yeah. But whichever one you choose, nobody chose it for you. And can I say this to you as we close? Anyway, we talk about that. You want to ask a question, I'll allow you. She has to tell you. She has to tell you. I will drop the bomb and I explain later that God does not choose a wife or husband for anybody. Ah. Ah. Ha, huh. Pastor. Ha. Huh. Then why do we come to you for prayer? Ha. Huh. I'm going to, please remind me, not today, because it will lead me to talk. There are seven things God gave you so that you can get that decision right. But God never chooses for you. He's too smart to choose for you. Listen, if God, will, if God leaves you to choose salvation, and that one didn't concern him. His wife, that will not be his head. You don't understand what you're talking about. Salvation is too important that if God will choose anything, he would rather choose salvation for you by force than he died for. He still, leave that one, he still left that one to you to choose. His wife will not be pursuing everywhere to choose for everybody. I will explain that to you on Sunday. But do you get this simple analogy? Even salvation, he says your decision. It didn't concern him. You think salvation and marriage, which one is more important to God? And he left down, so his now wife that will now be looking for everybody. But I'll explain that on Sunday. Thank you. Let's take your question so that we can go. Praise the Lord. 1,000 yards. <laughs> that is husband material, um, 1,000 yards. Okay, I, I, want to, I want to point out something um, about mother-in-laws okay. and um, wives who are not in, in line with their mother-in-laws. Um, Do you have one mother-in-law already? <laughs> so my question is, um, about the mother-in-laws who go to their son's houses um, without calling them or without permission. They just bug the house and um, just go there. 
and pack their bags without asking for permission. They just come and stay one yeah, month and yeah. stay two months. So my question is, is it right for them to go? Can I, can I shock you? Can I shock you? We, we are too traditional that we don't ever accept the reality of many things in this part of the world. But we also not be too in boyish that we are not able to strike a balance. I've told you marriage is not a continuation. Of, my family is not a continuation of my mother and father family. It's a new family. They can only come in with permission. Do you know me say that before? So it's wrong for you to just pack your bag and just go to your son's house and just, just arrive. I've come to stay for one month to... No, it's wrong. It's wrong. Are you getting what I'm saying? It is wrong. There's nothing wrong in just giving them that information. Okay. You just pack into... You know how problems start, eh? You know how world war start in family. The wife is busy. Maybe it's at a the time they're having some kind of training at office that he will even have time to cook for the husband, but they understand themselves. That means nothing to, to, to him. That's when the wild dying law. Then he next hey, Tine, I don't stay for one week. Your brother wife never cook for me. Useless woman. Why, why, why? Why are you insinuating what was never there? You came without telling me. So will she resign because you have come for one week without information? If you had made a call, or I'll be coming next week. It's nothing bad to say, ah, mommy, my wife is going to be so busy for the next one or two weeks in the office. They have training, they have this. But I think you make it end of the month, she'll be free so that she can have time to take good care of you. Does that make sense to somebody? That's why you must take permission now. And don't think because uh, some, ah, uh, mommy, yeah, we do. And mommy, you go. Mommy, go see time. I'm sorry, mommy. Come back end of the month. Nobody will have time for you in the air. I will go out. She will go out. You can't stay alone. Now. No, no, mommy, go, 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 go. You don't say, ah, hmm. See the person mama suffer for. Hey, some children are evil. His child is not evil. You are the one making evil out of all of them. So, listen, as parents, you know what the Bible says? It says, do not provoke your children. Provoke not your children. That means you are provoking them. You see, respect is reciprocal. Respect your daughter-in-law, she will respect you to the core. Don't just mess out because you have a status of mother-in-law who can stamp on anybody. Are you getting me? All right. Are you very clear on that? Thank you so much. Ha. Huh. Oh. Should we take this question? You should take the question. Oh, sister, but me, you see now. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh. This video is... Okay, anyway, we take off, Nisha. <laughs> All right, give her a microphone. They, they won't be... <laughs> I thank God for my parents, too. They are the most understanding parents anybody can know. My wife will tell you. Very, very understanding. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please, my question goes like this. Is it right for parents, especially the mothers, to pick spouse for their, for their child? And I'm going to pick a question from your explanation, which you said that, um, that when the, your mother, the mother-in-law comes into the house, you have every right to ask her to go away. But in such case, do we have to tell the mother to go immediately or is there any other way that you, you, you do it? Wisdom is profitable to direct. You know the best way to tell her in the situation now. And, and, and if she doesn't mind, you know you have some understanding, honestly I tell you, you have some understanding mother-in-law. My mother-in-law can come to her house, this is my wife, she will tell you for one month she'll be the one cooking for herself and we've been cooking for my wife before she comes from the office. I, she will call you kilo she will cook for my wife before my wife comes. So she will not complain. She will take care of herself, take care of her children, take care of my wife, take care of me while she's with us. Well, so if you have that kind of mother-in-law, then you are, anytime she comes, no problem. You are even happy to say, oh, my mommy, today must see me. That's what my wife will say. But you just a mother-in-law. That's not the case. The case is that cannot be in the house. Hey, she, never, she will call everybody in the village. Come and see you. Hey, America wonder. Hey, Chineke. Hey, hey. As if says... How many of you know? Hey! <laughs> hey, whoa! So, 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 if you have that type of mother in law, the best, find a way to release her. Because if you don't, if you don't, she will create a crisis for your wife. That's what we call image crisis. She will create image crisis your wife cannot manage. Where they'll be talking about it, your wife will not be there. And nobody will say the mother in law is lying. Because that's the one that gave birth to you and raised you. 
If you say this is who you are married to, the people, they just believe. That's why your wife will go to parties sometimes. Have you not watched? She will greet some people, they will not just answer her. She will come to you. Honey, I greeted mommy's younger. She didn't answer me. Is there any problem? You don't know what? They are battered at image. And everybody is responding to her based on the image, the perception they have. And that's the end of discussion. She has problems with everybody. So if you love your wife, you don't want problem for her. Anything that will give her a problem, send it away. Send them away. I'm telling you, send them away. So, is it right for mothers to choose? Let me tell you. I just said that briefly. Now, God never chooses for anybody. Listen, but God thus guides your decision to choose the right spouse for yourself. Okay? Get me? God never chooses for a man directly, but he guides your decision. He supervises that decision so that you choose the right person for yourself. And in doing that, number one, he gave you the Holy Spirit to direct you. Okay? Okay? Let me, let me explain how that works to you. Anybody, let me explain how that works to you. Um. Um. Somebody said, okay, um, I want to go to, um, this is, I want to go to Balogu in Lagos. And somebody says, get to Kilo here. Are you, are you getting me? Take, you will hear uh, CMS Akpogmo, CMS Akpogmo. Says, when you get to that Akpogmo, come down. As you come down, look up. You will see one tall building. You will see UBA with red on top of it. UBA, very tall building. There's another short one beside it. You will write, where my bank? Say, so once you come down, just look like this. You will see the building. Are you getting me? Once you get to that UBA, you will see a road by the side, just by the side. Just pass that road and down. You see, when you pass that road down, that's called Martin Street. When you get to that end of that street, you will look left again. You see one tall building, LSD. You don't know what I'm saying? And then you fall. When you get to Akwagbo, can you miss UBA? Are you getting me? Except you have afternoon blindness. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody? Can you miss UBA when you get down in Akwagbo? So you can trace your way there. Beside it, you can see a road. You go down, you go to Martin Street. Where you go, you say, so, has the person guided you enough to get there or not? So that's the work of the Holy Spirit. So it's left for you whether you are now following that is direction. But if you follow it, it guides you to getting it right. You can't miss it. It's as good as if, you see, what's the difference between the person taking me to Balogun or giving me that description? Just because he didn't follow me there. But it will be the same result if I follow what he said. So it gives you the Holy Spirit. Number two, it gives you brain with five billion cells. God gave you brain so you will not disturb him on some issues. Number three, it gave you pastors to guide you. Number four, he gave you parents, parents to comfort you. He gave you parents to advise you. So parents could be very instrumental because they're one of the seven things God gave us to guide us to choose right. Are you getting me? He gave you parents. So parents can be instrumental to helping their children make the right choice. And you know one of the reasons why that is, if they are godly parents, never follow an ungodly parent, all right? Because ungodly parents will always be selfish. They will never follow the Holy Spirit. They will be thinking of them, them, them. So if they, are, if they are godly, they can't help, they can guide. But not the same, the parents cannot choose for you. Because they can't impose. Are you getting me? My parents can't tell me, marry this person. If I don't like the person, it still boils to me. Say, Mama, anime or she. Church is prayer and amen. There's no fight. I'm not interested. End of discussion. But they have the right and the capacity to guide you. Because when you look at the Bible, it was Abraham who helped Isaac to get a wife. How many of you saw that? He brought Eliezer, the most intelligent servant he had. He says, go to these people, this tribe, who are Christians as it, as it were. Because we can't choose outside the body. Go to this place. You will find Christians there. Out of them, virgins are there. Go there, go and choose a wife for my, for my son. And when Eliezer got there, you know what Eliezer did? Eliezer prayed to God. He prayed one prayer. Oh, there's no time because that's a very huge message. He prayed one prayer and asked for the angel of the Lord to make the journey quick, to make the journey short. 
That's asking for the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Thirdly, he, he made God an offer. He said, God, I'm going to stay by this river. The first lady to come to fetch water, and I'm going to place a huge demand on her. Whoever meets that demand will be the one you have ordained for my master's son. And the Bible didn't tell us all that details. But let me tell you. One camel, I can't remember. I was told one camel will drink 50 liters of water. 50, 50, 50 liters of water, 50 kegs, before a camel can be satisfied. That 50 liters, he will drink 50 for it to be satisfied. And then Eliezer went with camels. Hello? And she said to the lady, please, give me water. After the lady said, will your camels not be tasty? She said, yes, they are tasty. Can you give them? He said, I will feed all of them. I don't know how long it took that girl. <laughs> are you getting me? And some guy will say, are you mad? Are you all right? Is it one cup they will drink? You know what I'm saying? She did all of that. And then after doing that, Eliezer said, please, can I follow you home? And followed the young lady home and said, please, this is what I came for. And this was my request to God. And God granted it in her. So, and he said, fine, fine, fine. That was so parents can be involved. It's, it's biblical. It's not out of order. All right? But they, we must also lean on the guidance of the Spirit. The last question. Thank you. Because of time. We just wanted to close. But you just wanted to burn our diesel. The last question. The last question. Praise the Lord. I thought Gabby was raising his hand. Okay, yeah, come, come, come. So that the youth will not protest. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, My moment. question is on the issue of a joint account. Tie. <laughs> right on, Mama. You know, Listen, though, this is experience. Though. You know now, people have problem in joint accounts. I don't know. We have been hearing it in social media. Okay, man. How husband and wife had joint accounts and the husband was cheating on the woman. On the way he's spending the money. He will. He will. <laughs> so, I don't know. But we've also had the one that the wife was cheating on the husband and now she spends the money. Yes. I have not heard uh, that. Let me have heard that one. <laughs> I've heard that one too. So, so it's balance we are looking for now. Okay. This is one one go let's draw. <laughs> so my question is, I don't know how it will work. Maybe it has been working for others, but it does work for a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. It works for you too. Please. Yeah. You get a lot, he gets email. So just transparency. Mm -hmm. But but the withdraw the withdrawal strategy is it both to sign? Either to sign. That's because there's a lot of trust. And that's why you can't have a good hope without trust. Mm -hmm. You see, once trust is lacking, your crisis has started before the marriage. And there are some who don't trust each other, yet they are still going ahead. There must be what? Trust. Absolute. Trust. Absolute what? Trust. Absolute. Trust. I remember when we got married. Once, once, once the, you know, I think our trust has matured now. Once they, set, they pay my wife's salary, she will forward the text message to me the way it came in. See, honey, shetty, shetty. Sometimes people pretend like I didn't see you. Don't get me excited about it. I say, what, what? Say, a tiri, a tiri. <laughs> say, a tiri, a tiri. I say, what? What is what? What is credit to him? What is send a lot to him? I say, okay, I'll check it. What is you? I don't want to look like a king. That's what I mean. say, honey, you know that. You know that. <laughs> Oh, why did I now reveal the secret? Oh. <laughs> she will. Yes, it's transparency. And somebody, if I really make any money, honestly, I'm excited to tell her. Honey, ah, we, might, we made this business. This happened. This happened. And, uh, I sell his screen. I say, honey, ah, this is how much I made from that screen business. So I'm so excited. This, I even be giving her projection before the money is paid. Because, listen to me, we have things we are doing with money. We are glad those things are moving. Are you getting me? I'm not building a house to give for a girlfriend. I don't have a girlfriend to give any ex extra external spending. The only girlfriend and the wife I have is in one person, two in one. The girlfriend, the wife, amen. She's the sugar mommy, only at three in one. What are you talking about? So what do we do? 
Everything we are building is for her and the children. So we're excited to share with each other. But if there's no trust, you can't have joint account too. With a man you don't trust, you can't too. You can't. Because you put your money, she will use it to service some girls and do like big man outside. And yet it's your money. It's your money, yeah. You'll be doing my money to do big girls outside. Big boy. You use my car to post for... Or song you have touched, you have my put that neighbor. So, in, in summary, mommy, you listen, every man, every woman, please study your man very well to decide the type of financial whatever that you will adopt in that family. Don't say because they say we should do joint. Okay, I don't hear the pastor talk more. So when you put 200,000 there today and you can't find nothing there tomorrow, you see, where the money go? Don't say, pastor, you see what you put me. <laughs> pastor, you see, oh... Now, Jaja, I come Bible study. <laughs> now, you say, make I join them. So, you got to study the man very well and be sure that he has earned your trust to that particular level. Amen? My wife will take, we, 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 I haven't said, yeah, be doing budget. She will take her salary, she will plan her budget on the salary and send to me for approval. Her money, she tells me to approve it before she can spend her money. Is that not crazy? Is her money I approve it before she can spend it? Can you imagine? Yeah, yeah. And when I don't get when I don't get the budget, I just tell her, "Let me have it, madam. Let me have it." You know why? Because the best and the simplest way to control expenses is through budgeting. If you don't budget, you can spend two hundred thousand in three days. If you budget, you can spend two hundred thousand in two months. Just because your expenses are regulated and they are controlled. If you don't do that, start doing it for your personal life. I don't spend money anyhow. My head would have calculated. If I have money, 10 million today, what it will do? It's already set one by one. So you can't just jam me and be collecting money anyhow. It's when there is no regulated budget. Somebody will just jam you. Amen? Something will just jam you. You just enter, look the thing. Ah, and this thing is fine. You shake your head like this. Bring it. I can't, I can't shake it and I say, bring it. Where everything is thoroughly regulated. All right? So, finally. Thank you, sir. Akwa Ibon Zong! Sir, this one passed Akwa Ibon Well, I, I'm trying to merge everything I want to talk about because the myths we've taken uh, so long from childhood as regards... Yeah. Mother in law. Yeah, yeah. Father's in law don't give issues. No, they don't. So, mother in laws and daughter, You know, father's in law, they, they respect themselves. Well, they just try to maintain. <laughs> so, all of those mates and the movies we watch also in yep. Africa. You're very correct. Everything comes together. Correct. And a whole lot of talks like that. Yeah, yeah. So, why growing up as a young man, I've been hearing this uh, mother in law and uh, daughter-in-law always having issue, issue. So when I got into the system, I said, mm. how can I manage all of this? You know? I mean, when you got into the into system. Into the system. <laughs> <laughs> so I started saying, how can I manage all of this? So the best thing I was able to do, okay, when, whenever anything wants to come, I said, okay, uh, don't worry, I'll sort it. You know, I just carry shoulder up. Then this other person to carry shoulder up. So I, I don't know if there will be a part, like we did last year, parenting series. Yes, sir. There will be a better... A time like we did, we are having for marriage now for a yeah. series like this. We can have opportunity to invite our parents, let them come and unlearn certain because unlearn what, and relearn because most of the things they are doing, they yeah. think they are doing it well because that was what they had in so their let's, own time. Let's laugh for this young man. That, that's a fantastic one. That that was what they had in their own time. That was how they were taught. So coming down to our own generation, with some of us have grown, a lot of things I learned them outside. Yeah. Because at the tender age, I lost my father just like that. So we're just learning everywhere. So mm -hmm. little by little, we're able to see that those ones that we f I feel they were not of importance to my life, putting them out like that. So I think we need to help our parents because on their own part, I have a very disciplined mother. She wants her things to be done like this and everything. And I'm, I think it, in the house, I give her listening ear. So I will allow her to finish all the gist. Then I start picking it one after the other, like that, like that. So I think if we can have so series, I don't, I will. Let's like celebrate, right let's then. celebrate, you. Gabby. You know, we just said something that makes a lot of sense. And I think we'll think about it and we'll plan it. 
you know, that's why a generation must be an improvement on the previous generation. All right. So we must know better than our parents. Now, let me say this. Sir, ignorance is generational. So that's why when you learn, you're not just learning for yourself. You are learning for your children. Because if you pass your ignorance to your children, they live on that same ignorance. Are you getting me? So that's why God said, my people are destroyed. Those here forces for lack of knowledge. He said, because you have rejected knowledge, I will reject you. Now, you don't reject what is not available. It also means that ignorance is a choice. And it says not just that. He said, I will reject your children. Why will God reject their children? Because he said they have, what, they have passed the same ignorance to their children. I rejected you because of your ignorance. You pass the same thing to your children. You make them automatic candidate for rejection as well. So when we learn, it's just not just for us, it's for our children. So sometimes we have to learn because of them. Because they won't, what we don't know, we can't pass across to them. So and we have picked a lot of meat from films, from home videos. You get what I'm saying? From all of these tools. And those things are not supposed to be so. We had the story of a lady who got into marriage. And because uh, mama must have heard that. She will, she will fry something in the, in the round frying pan. She will cut it off into a square shape and throw away all the ones on the side. And then that led to a crisis between him and the, and the husband. Because what, what kind of nonsense is this? This is wasted. And the guy said, no, no, that side is done. That side is done. I'm not a baby. I'm not a baby. I was in the kitchen for years with mommy. <laughs> so they, they had to bring the mother into the issue. The mother now said, no, no, my daughter, you know that my own frying pan is square. That's why it comes out like that. Oh. <laughs> Can you imagine? She said, man, but since you have a round, the thing will spread around. That's why you are, he said, I didn't know. Because I always, anytime you bring it, it's like that. So when I, I will cut it, throw it away. I told me, okay, that settles the score. Can you imagine how she just speaks something directly? There are many things you are doing. You don't know why it is so. Even in church, many sermons you hear, you don't know why it is so. You just believe it is so, and you are just flowing in it. Amen? I'm telling you, the day I demystify spirit husband, the day I demystify spirit husband, I told my wife now, I got a seed from M an MFM pastor after that. A seed, seed, MFM pastor came to give me. I told my wife, she called me and said, I watch this, when you're talking about this, and I'm so confused. He said, because in our setting, this is something we believe and we all know. He said, but I can't place it. You're making a bit of sense. Can you explain to me more? Then we got into scriptures. Amen. And I asked him a lot of, just before we go to the spiritual, just things that common sense can tell us. Amen. Are you getting me? Spirits don't get pregnant. So where did spirit burn that? Spirit don't sleep with people. So when did he get pregnant? When did he, amen? You have children in the spirit you don't know. Where did you do naming ceremony? Amen? I don't understand. I ask a lot. I ask a lot of questions. You know, after we now did that, we now moved into the scripture. Okay, if this happened in this palace, now that you are now born again, if any man be in Christ, is a new creature. All things are passed. Behold, all things have become new. So it means your, the, the blood cannot undo that. We have to keep. And we, by the time we feed the guy, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. after a while, you know, the guy sent me $100 from the United States. It's just an MFM pastor who watches our meetings from the United States. Sent me $100. I said, please give me your account. Uh, he said, well, I will take that. You know, though I can't loud it where I am, but I understand now. And we just kept going. But we just made it like that. I can, theologically, I can tell you a million and one things that we just met. And we just continue in it. And we don't know why it is so. But because that's what it is. Praise the name of the Lord. Some of them are not wrong. So that's why you don't need to challenge it because he does not hide or remove from salvation. Are you getting me? Somebody has finished his service one day and he said, in Jesus' name, we pray. And everybody said, hey, Amen. Said, God bless you. See you next day. Pastor, we have not shared the grace. He said, Who told you? Is he a must? We must share grace. He said, Tell me where. I said, We are finished service. We are praying. Go home. Ah. And some of them we are looking as if they are pastors back today. The There's really nothing wrong in sharing the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Surely, goodness and mercy. 
But it's just a church who did that and people copy, copy it, and it became a norm. Hello. I said there's nothing wrong, but it's just a church. Before they don't even put, they don't even put surely goodness. I mean, if you remember, it was another church who had there surely goodness and mercy shall follow you. And everybody and it became a general. Norm. There's nothing wrong, but it is not a rule. So if we finish the church now, and I say let's go home. Don't tell me, Pastor, we have not shared the grace. We have been enjoying the grace since we came. So there are so many things. There are so many things. I get it. But if they are not wrong, if they don't affect our faith, they don't affect our eternity. It's not necessary to start making the theory out of it or like you know Bible. Just leave it like that. Whether we share it, we don't share it, it doesn't affect our bond again. So let's not save that one. But there are common ones we also met that we don't know why it is so. We're just doing it like that. I've told you that. Anything. Okay, you, you are just going somewhere. You use your left leg to eat. What do you say to yourself? Huh? Who told you that nonsense? It's nonsense. You didn't see it from anywhere. But we just, they say, ah, it be like, say, this. Today shop no go good. This out is no go good. Left, you go back. Bam. All the way you have been eating right, what happened from the way we eat left? Nothing. It's the same thing. I mean, you understand what I'm saying? You are praying. A man comes and says, well, ah, that means the prayer is answered because a man came in. Where did you get that nonsense from? Somebody is praying. A woman came and says, oh, uh, because our head does. Our mommy said that. And those things are, they, 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 they are fables. There's nothing like that. So God bless you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Gabby. And we'll talk about that some other time. All right, thank you. Let's rise on our feet. And shall we share the offering in fellowship? I know say you go talk. <laughs> All right, let's take an offering. Let's take an offering. Get something good to the...